So in this video, I'm going to talk about the engine compartment where you have a rear wheel drive car. The difference between a rear wheel drive car and a front wheel drive car is generally that the engine is pointed to the front of the car and it's going this way as you can see here. On a front wheel drive car the engine is going sideways. So they're all very similar but they also have some differences. So in this engine you can see there's a lot of space here. Now a lot of cars don't have this much space but they're all typically about the same. You've got your alternator. The alternator provides current to all the electrical components of the car while the engine is running. When the engine is off the battery also provides current but then you're draining the battery because the engine is not running and the alternator is not providing any current. Now you can touch the battery. Here's the positive post and you'll see how it has the big plus sign and you got the negative post with the negative sign and you can touch the battery post it's not going to cause you any damage or any problem at all. The only time that there's damage is if you are touching metal across both of the posts or if you touch metal from the positive post to the engine where there's some metal that it can touch. Then it's going to spark and you're going to be grounding out the battery if you leave it on long enough it could heat up and the battery could end up possibly exploding. Now you got a radiator. Some cars have a r radiators that have a radiator cap. Some cars have radiators that don't have a cap but all they have is an overflow tank. And you can see here this engine compartment has an overflow tank right up here. It says engine coolant. So what happens is that when the engine uh, warms up it builds up pressure inside the radiator and fluid will come out into the reservoir. When it cools down it'll suck the fluid back into the radiator. Now you've got all the standard components. You've got your air cleaner. There's an air filter inside the air cleaner here and you have a fuel injector body down below the air cleaner body, the air, air cleaner com container. Here's your uh, air conditioning compressor. Now on a lot of cars they have only one belt driving all of the components for your power steering pump, for your alternator, for your water pump, and if this belt gets old and it breaks then everything stops working. So it's a good idea to have your belt checked every six months or so because these, these belts do last a long time. It's also a good idea to have these belts on your, uh, have a spare one in your car so if you're out stranded in the desert or somewhere where there's no mechanic around hopefully you've got a tool that can uh, you can replace it or you can be towed to a gas station and they don't have to go and get one you've got one in the car and they can put it on a lot of cars for that belt there's a diagram of how the belt goes on and a mechanic he's gonna be the one looking at it to, to put it on because it goes all in these um, configurations around all these pulleys down here to, to get in, in the right uh, configuration to drive everything. Now, you've got your top radiator hose and you should check it to make sure it's soft and pliable, see if there's any cracks or bubbles in it. You've got a, um, and if, if it does have cracks or bubbles, make sure to get it replaced. You've got your master cylinder in the master cylinder reservoir. So you can see if there's any leaks. Now you can see like, I don't know if you can see that at the bottom underneath here, how this is actually wet. So this master cylinder is probably leaking. That may be from the previous one, but I'd say that it's this one is leaking. So you can see evidence how it's wet there. So if the brake fluid is low, 
and you're constantly having to put brake fluid in, you know something's going on. It's going somewhere. So only put brake fluid into the master cylinder. Never put anything else. So you can see how this engine is going forward. So it pointed front and back. So you've got, this is on a rear wheel drive car. Uh, it's actually on a, on a Chevy Tahoe. But it's uh, connected to the transmission. The transmission has a drive shaft that connects to the rear end and you get the power going to the rear wheels that push the car along. So that's uh, generally with a front wheel drive, I mean a rear wheel drive car, the engine is mounted front ways like this as opposed to going sideways. So some things to check, you've got uh, a power steering pump. Now not all cars are, are exactly the same but they're similar. So you got your power steering pump, you check it, you can check it with the engine off or on. Just be careful that you don't get in the way of the belt there. Now this one, you can see it actually is low so it needs the power steering fluid. The power steering pump takes transmission fluid. It is the same thing as power steering fluid. Now some cars though, they actually use hydraulic fluid in the power steering pump. So you got to check and that is usually in like some of the foreign cars, the high-end cars like BMW and so on. Okay, so over here we have a reservoir for the windshield washer fluid and it'll say on there windshield washer fluid. So you can fill that up with water or Windex or a mix of both. And uh, there's a pump inside that when you push the button inside it should squirt your windows. Now over here, when you're checking your motor oil, this engine has a dipstick right here to check the motor oil. You check the motor oil with the engine off. You pull out the dipstick, wipe it off and then put it back down into the tube and pull it back out and see where it indicates that the level is. Always check the motor oil with the engine off. You also have a dipstick for the transmission fluid. And you do the same thing, pull it out of the tube, wipe it off, and stick it back in. But with the transmission fluid, you check that with the engine running and the transmission in park and set your, uh, your emergency or parking brake. And fill it if it needs a quarter or whatever the, uh, what it is. So you put, for the transmission, you put the fluid in through the tube where the where the dipstick is. So obviously you're going to need a funnel to put into the tube and then you put your your fluid in. To put in the motor oil you can see over here, here's a cap that you just twist this off okay and you're going to be able to see inside the engine. So use a funnel or if your aim is good enough don't use a funnel however you want to do that. Okay and then make sure you twist that back on. Now you got spark plug wires. If the engine is running and you see like little zaps, your spark plug wires need to be replaced. The spark plug wires should be nice and soft and pliable also. So uh, then you have, this is a steering column, comes down from your steering wheel through the firewall down to your steering box. The steering box is way down here and um, you don't need to mess with that. Okay, so think about what else you got here going on. So you can check the air filter too by taking off the top. Uh, those uh, wing nuts come off and you can pull out the air filter see if it's real dirty. Okay, so um, checking out to see what else you got I can tell you about. Okay, so that's all pretty much it. You want to be careful of the uh, areas in here because it gets really hot. If you touch these are exhaust manifolds, okay? And when you check the water in the radiator, be careful when you take off the cap because there may be pressure built up and it and it could come squirting out. So be and burn you. So be very careful. And I think that should be about it for doing it at this point on this car. 
So look forward to my next video.